I wanted to ask you if there's a trait from childhood where you go, oh, it makes total sense that that's the kind of work I gravitate towards. Right. Because I am curious about the way you grew up and stuff. And I, and I just wonder if there's some picture you could give me of when you were yeah. a kid. So there is a, there's two quick things that pop in my head. When I was growing up, if I used to I used to play like board games and darts and stuff like that, and I used to play by myself and be different characters. And it was the '80s, so a lot of times it was like USA versus Russia, right? Um, and right. it would be like you know it would be high stakes. And my mother used to always laugh because she would say, "You're the only kid I know who could be playing by themselves but still lose." Because <laughs> if I was playing a board game and it was USA versus Russia, and I felt like I was USA, when it was Russia's turn, I would be trying my hardest as Russia to beat USA. And then when I was back to USA, I would be like, well, that's a hell of a move. <laughs> now, I'm, now I'm in a little bit of trouble here. So I could always play this fake game. And then when I first saw, I saw war movies too early. You know, in the 80s, Vietnam movies were everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I just saw them too early. And it just spooked me out. So I would play make-believe where I would pretend I was a POW in my room. like. And I moved my bed, there were drawers here, so I could lay under my bed where I couldn't move. So I would have to prepare myself for when inevitably I went to Vietnam, inevitably was a POW, so that I could know how to do it. But I, I would quote unquote play POW. Now it wasn't fun to play. Would it get real for you? For sure, it was a nightmare. Really? Yeah, it was really intense. Now mind you, I was a kid, so I was making up the rules of what war was, but while I was in it, it felt shockingly real and shockingly intense. And that was a side of myself that, to this day, I've never, you know, there's sides of yourself you grow out of or you shun. Well, I've always liked that about myself. When I'm alone, I'm not bored. I can make shit up and play and have fun and, you know, goof off. And I'm like, well, that's what this work is. So when we get away from that, I don't know what the f we're doing. So that's why I'm not like a Shakespearean actor. And what I mean by that is, some actors, which I, who I really respect, love the words. And it's the words, you don't find, it, find the words, the words will inform you. The words don't inform me. The eyes of the other actor inform me more than the words. So I like the words, the words got us there. But while I'm playing, I'm not like, you know, the writer put a comma here. <laughs> I'm gonna really examine this comma. I'm gonna pause. Yeah. And then the next word was, and then. I, I'm like, yeah, I, I, I feel like I know what the intention is, but. Now we're here. Right. And so that I now have to try to hand pick projects knowing, and I don't like to take a job before I've talked to the bosses to say like, I don't want you disappointed, but this is how I like to do it. And it's not like, and if it doesn't work that way, fine. I don't want to do it your way. And at this point in my life, I don't have to. So you feel pretty comfortable being able to tell people. Oh, for sure. This is just this is what, what I, I do. Yeah. If you want something else, there are so many talented actors who can do it. There's a line of dudes around my look who are great, who can do it, who were trained, who are at Juilliard, who will technically give you every single word. And when you go, great, the sixth line in that paragraph, can we speed that up? If you say that to me, I'm like, man, we're speaking different languages. Hey, folks, thanks for watching. If you like what you just saw, then why not subscribe? Click right here for lots more off camera. And if you want to see the hour long version of these conversations, I'm going to give you the secret link. Here it is, offcamera.com. Check it out.